Hello, welcome to Reso Coder. Generics are an amazing feature of C Sharp and many other languages. They enable us to write code once and use it with many different types. What does that mean? Well, let's find out. Suppose that we want to create a method to concatenate all the elements of an array which will effectively convert the whole array to a string. Let's create that method right now. So let's create a static string, concatenate int array, and it's gonna accept one argument of type int array, and let's call it array. And inside this method we want to concatenate each and every element of this array to a string. We could just create a string and set it to be empty at first, and then for each element in this array just do str plus equals something like array and some index, right? But this is not efficient. Strings are immutable. This means that every time that you add something to a string, it creates a new string. It doesn't just expand the old string because that is immutable. Then all of the old strings have to be destroyed, otherwise known as garbage collection, and that is just absolutely not efficient. For this, there is a data type called string builder. String builders are like strings, but they are mutable. This means they are much more efficient for these kinds of operations. So let's delete this and create a string builder. We need to be using a namespace, so just press control and dot and using system.txt, so hit enter. It's gonna be called sb and it's gonna be equal to new string builder. Now for each var item in array and var is just an implicitly typed variable. This means that the compiler is gonna infer the type. In this case, this var is the same as if we wrote int over here. But let's change it back to var because it's just more versatile that way. And so for each item, we want to append it to the string builder. So sb.append item. All right, and now we want to return the string builder sb to string. All right, now in the main method, we can create an array of integers and we are using collection initializer. And now we just want to write line, concatenate int array, and the array is integers. All right, let's run this. And it's gonna run just as expected. But now, suppose that we have an array of characters. It's gonna look something like this. And we also wanna concatenate it in the same way as this method does. We cannot use this method though, because it has an int array as a parameter. So we need to copy this method, paste it down here. And we could also just overload this method by putting here car. And now it's all good, but let's also change the name to concatenate car array. We actually don't need to change anything in the body of this method because this variable called item is implicitly typed. However, whether you create an overloaded method or you create a completely new method like we've done here, you still need to have the same code twice and that is just not good. But we can use generics for concatenating arrays of any type. So let's again copy this method and paste it down here. The name is gonna be just concatenate array and this is gonna have a generic parameter t, all right, and the parameter is gonna have a type t. Awesome, now when we go back to the main method, we can change this method to concatenate array, and let's copy this, paste it here, and here we wanna concatenate array of characters. So as you can see here, we are using the same method to concatenate arrays of both integers and characters. Let's run this, and we aren't getting any errors and everything is nice. But this method can be used only to concatenate the elements of arrays. In the .NET framework, there's a class called list, which is basically an array to which we can add more elements even after instantiation. Is there a way in which we could concatenate the elements of any collection? And big surprise, yes, there is. We just need to use a generic constraint. So let's create another method, static string, concatenate collection, generic parameter will be t, and it's gonna have one parameter, t collection, and now comes the generic constraint where t implements i list. And we again need to add the proper namespace, so control dot and enter. i list is an interface, and if you wanna learn more about interfaces, check out my tutorial by clicking on the card in the corner. All you need to know about this i list interface is that it's implemented in all of the arrays and also in the generic list, which we wanna use here. All right, now in the body of this method, we basically wanna have the same code as up here. We just need to change this array to say collection. Now back to the main method, let's create a list with generic type of string and let's add the namespace. It's gonna be called strings and it's equal to new list of type string and it's gonna have strings hello 
everyone. All right, and now we want to write line, concatenate collection, strings, and to demonstrate that this works also with arrays, let's concatenate collection characters. And yeah, as you can see, it completely works. However, if we were to use this method concatenate array on this list of strings, so concatenate array, and pass in the strings list, we are going to get an error because strings is not an array. You can already see just how beneficial generics can be. If you need to do something which can be done with many types, generics are gonna surely save you a lot of copying and pasting. However, as we've already seen with the list class, generics can be also used with classes. Since you already know how they work with generic methods, creating generic classes will go like a breeze. So let's go all the way down, create a class, to collection holder, it's gonna have two generic parameters, t and u, and we also wanna use a generic constraint where t implements iList, and also where u implements also iList. We wanna have two private fields, private t, collection1, and private u, collection2. This class is gonna have one public constructor, it's gonna have two parameters, t, c1, and u, c2. And inside we just wanna set collection1 to be equal to c1, and collection2 is gonna be equal to c2. This class will have a method which is gonna return concatenated string of both the collections. So public string, to concatenated string, and again string builder as b, equals new string builder, and for each var item, in collection1, we wanna sb.append item, and we wanna do the same thing for collection2, and then just return sb.toString. We can also do something a bit fancier, that is, to get the type of both collections at runtime. So let's create a method, public, it's gonna return a tuple, which is something like an array which has only a fixed number of elements. In this case, it's gonna have two elements of type type, and the second element is also be of type type. It's gonna be called get type of collections, and it's gonna be an expression bodied method. It's gonna return a new tuple, and inside it, we wanna have the types of both of the collections. So type of t, which is the type of our first collection, and also type of u, which is obviously the type of the second collection. And just to demonstrate that we can also use generic type as the return type, we are gonna create a private t, completely not useful method, and it's gonna return collection1. Alright, now let's go back to the main method. Let's create an instance of our generic class, so var holder equals new to collection holder of type list string. So as you can see, we are using a generic class inside a generic class, and the other collection is gonna be of type int array, and we wanna pass in strings and integers. And now we just wanna write out concatenated string, so holder dot to concatenated string, and also we wanna write out holder dot get type of collections. And when we run this program for the last time, it prints out the string list and then it concatenates the integer array to it. And then the type of the first collection is surely a generic list with the generic type of system dot string. And the type of the second collection is an int32 array. Do you want to finally find a good calculator for your Android smartphone? Download OneCalc, the simple scientific calculator made with you in mind. Customize it to your liking, choose from lots of beautiful material themes and most importantly, save time. Be efficient, use OneCalc, get it on Google Play from the link in the description. Alright, that were the basics of generics in C Sharp. If you don't wanna miss more tutorials like this, subscribe to this channel and also hit the bell button. If you wanna learn even more from this tutorial, go to the link in the video description which is gonna take you to resocoder.com. There will be a few questions and coding assignments. Learning by actively doing is the best way to learn anything. If this video helped you to become a better C Sharp developer, please give it a like and also share it. Leave a comment if you have anything to say, follow me on social media and see you in the next video.